Okay, hey guys, it's Miss Duncan again. Um, this week, since it's before Thanksgiving, I'm having students um, create Native American um, Indian feathers. Okay, um, and these in particular, because of some of the designs we're doing, would be painted feathers. Um, a lot of people um, enjoy painting feathers with lots of great detail. But the in the Native American culture, the feather symbolized trust and honor and strength, wisdom, power, and freedom. Um, it was an object that was revered and a sign of like a high honor. Um, Native American warriors were awarded a feather when they won a battle or were particularly brave in a war. Or they did something, uh, accomplished something that helped out the tribe. So it was an honor to get these feathers. And they were um, all in, uh, worn in the their headdress. Um, some feathers were valued others, I guess, depending on the color sometimes. Or the but we're going to create our own um, Indian feathers today. And there are quite a few different uh, shapes for feathers. So I'll kind of sketch just a few of them to start with. I know my screen is a little bit dark here, but I hope you can see. Um, I always start off with the little middle kind of stem or spine of the feather. And you can keep yours very smooth. If you want, okay. Um, brand new feathers that haven't been messed with would not be split apart like this. Um, but I really like the way that looks. It gives it some character. Is it some texture? Looks like been a little bit um, worn or windy. I really like the way that works. So when I do my feather, let me put that on a piece of paper here. Alright, I kind of start off and I'll have like a little section and come back in. Pretend like it's a little bit split. I try to stay fairly even all the way around. If it helps you, you could go ahead and draw your feather first. And then make some of these little divisions if you wanted. And they don't have to be equally spaced. I like to spread it out a little bit. a little rough up there okay and then I strathers down at the bottom um ways you can decorate these of so, uh, um we can do what we did with the trees uh, that you did a weeks ago, um, where you can focus mainly on uh, the war colors, or you could focus on cool. You could do a rainbow blend, or just make it completely random. Stripes, kind of whatever, whatever you feel. I'm using crayons, but you could easily use colored pencils. Especially to get some nice, precise details. And y'all know I love to blend colors like the rainbow. So I tend to do that a lot. Now, any design can be put in a lot of times, uh, feathers have um, spots painted, or they are 
circular shapes, teardrop type shapes. Sometimes they resemble eyes. There are really so many things you can do, but these turn out so pretty. Let's see. Get some light turquoise color here. And I can come in, let's see, I'm going to get a red. And I can leave that area white if I want. I would just continue with various colors. You can see some of the different patterns I did in here. I just kind of randomly decided things as I went and picked colors that I enjoy. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm done to really make this colors pop is to outline my edges with black. A black colored pencil would probably work best because you get a much thinner line. But you use what you have. If you wanted to do this with marker, you could. I just like to use crayons or colored pencils because they blend better. Okay. So that's what I've got so far. And I would continue uh, throughout my feather, adding details as I go. Remember, feathers have many shapes. If you want to get online and, and Google um, various uh, styles of feathers, or type in feather outline, and you get all kinds of different, um, different looks for your feathers. And then you could just look at those and draw and come up with your own pattern. This is or you could you could name it, you could do others. This is colorful. Alright, enjoy it.